We will get to some Blazers stuff. I've been uh, tracking the mocks. Where are we at on the mocks? What's the latest mocks? You know, all of them are all over the place. They're so. all over the map. Nobody has any clue, but I enjoy reading every single one. I see Cody Williams at 14. I see Cody Williams at 4. I don't mm. know what to make of any Cody of Williams at 4? Yeah. Wow. There's like seven mocks that I'm currently trying to keep up with. Does um, the uncertainty make you a little bit more anticipatory? It gets me antsy with my pants. For it. Yeah. I mean, I know we'd be all paying attention no matter what, but are you like... I got to be there when the picks are made, watch the drama unfold, yes. or am I just going to keep track of it well, on my phone because I got better things to do? I think the latter is certainly fair to a lot of listeners that are going to respond to that in their car, at home, whatever, and say, eh, that's why, come on, <laughs> this draft, I'm going to follow this on my phone. <laughs> but the Blazers announced yesterday they're having a Moda Center watch party for the draft. We're having a watch party at the Moda Center. They huh? are. They're going to have people come into the Moda Center. You can watch the draft. I think it's a good idea. I love when other teams do that. Jody going to be there? Yeah, you know it. <laughs> In her throwback blazer uh, jacket. Let's go Blazers! Woo! Um, she's a woo girl. But um, I'm getting kind of excited because I do think that they have an opportunity to get a real good piece out of this. I know seven is not one, two, three, or four. Or five or six, <laughs> no, breaking news. No, it's not. But I think this draft is so wild and weird that you could have a player that's pretty good fall to you. And look, I'm having no more hopes than... Just give me a good role guy. You get one guy that sticks in your rotation. You give me a real good role guy with a little bit of upside. Give me a Nick Platoon. Give me somebody that, like, yeah. teases them at a star level but ultimately only is a really good role guy. I'd be okay with that. But somebody you can plug into the starting lineup for the next seven to eight years that slowly develops and is a, is a part of your future, right? Like, that's that's a successful night. The reality is... Two things. One, this draft does suck, and so I think that waters down some of the excitement and expectation as opposed to maybe a year ago when we were all having conversations about are they going to trade the number three pick for Jalen Brown? Remember when that was a thing? Are we going to trade the number three pick for Zion Williamson? That's a long time ago. Those are the arguments we were having on this show literally a year ago. What are we going to get for the number three overall pick? Because we're, of course, going to win now with Damian Lillard. That's what everybody's told us for the last two years. We're only tanking to get better assets. <laughs> Here you find yourself in a watered-down draft, which is a bit of a bummer, but these are the only nights that really matter for the Blazers. Like, none of their games this last season mattered that much. This is what matters. And so I am I am fired up like a like a crazy man on Mountain Dew, dude. I oh, cannot yeah? – I was trying to think of an analogy. A crazy man on Mountain Dew? <laughs> I cannot wait to watch this draft. Is that and really I'm gonna, what you just said? <laughs> I'm going to have hot takes. I'm going to give you the – I'm going to give you the reaction. If we take a guard, I'm going to have a public meltdown. It's not going to be pretty. I'm going to burn something down. I can't wait for the NBA draft. Uh, Cronin, remember a year ago, said of Scoot, quote, a chance to be a transcendent player in this league, end quote. That did not start out well, but it did at least end on a high. He still technically has a chance to be a transcendent player. For a while there, Cronin was talking like a crazy man on Mountain Dew. <laughs> he was, man. Too much Mountain Dew for that crazy bastard. <laughs> what a phrase. Um, I want to get to this audio. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and it was the Ringer NBA Draft Show with Jonathan Gavoni. And one of the play uh, players they bring up, him and Kevin O'Connor, is... One of my favorite prospects, actually. I'm growing quite fond of him. Mm. I've watched a lot of YouTube highlights. Who do we got? Reed Shepard. Don't do it, man. Don't do this the to me. The 6'1 white guy. Don't do this to with me. With a 42-inch vert and shoots 39-plus percent. You sound like a crazy guy who's had too much Mountain Dew, man. I probably have. I need more <laughs> of it in the morning. Uh, here was Gavoni running down. So oh, Kevin O'Connor seems to think, and many do, that Reed Shepard's going to be a top four pick. Yeah. His his ceiling is pretty high. I've also seen some Dante DiVincenzo, which I think kind of speaks to the draft in a nutshell of the fourth pick in this draft might be Dante DiVincenzo. Again, role player. You find but a, that a, a really good yeah. role guy. DiVincenzo's a good role player. Here was Gavoni on, okay, if he falls past the first four, you kind of look at it and you say, eh, is there a team that needs him? Well, Gavoni threw out one. I think Portland knows them. I mean, like at some point you got to pick the best player who, you know, the, the guy who projects to be the best guy five years from now. And so I don't, I think that's where teams get themselves into trouble sometimes is drafting for need because, you know, these rosters are very fluid. I mean, there's a reason why these teams are, are, are drafting as high as they are. And so I think you, you make it work. You take the guy who's going to be the best player 
three to five years from now and you figure it out later. O'Connor immediately pushed back and said, if I'm a Blazer fan, this is worrying me. They, <laughs> they then joked about doing a Dame CJ thing again. And then Gavoni went into a little more detail because he was asked by Kevin O'Connor, don't you draft for need, fit, or how do you evaluate best player available versus what you need, fit, et cetera? Gavoni gave his answer. I think it is. No, I think you don't, you know, you don't want to cannibalize your existing roster. And, you know, these guys are so sensitive right now that you've got to make sure that one of these guys doesn't like storm into your office the next day after the draft and demand a trade. But, you know, ultimately, like, you know, when you were doing redrafts, you know, like five years in the past or whatever, like very, you, 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 you don't remember like why a team passed on a player, you know, like, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I think just to like, well, we already have this guy, especially like when you're a bad team. So, I mean, I, I, th I think you, you, I think you got to go with the best player available in most cases. So ultimately he says, if he's there, you take best player available. I, I think if I'm to read tea leaves here, cause Gavoni is a Mike Schmitz guy. They yes, worked together is. for many a year. Yes, he is. Um, I think the latest mock is more accurate to what they want, but I think what he is doing by saying this stuff, and this is just me kind of reading tea leaves, trying to read the tea leaves. I think he's just throwing out in the ethos, uh, if Reed Shepard falls, don't be shocked. Because, man, if he's a really good player, <laughs> why hesitate? Take best player available. I don't think they're yeah. going to draft him. I don't think he'll even fall to seven. No, I think he'll go before that. But, but I think what, what his point is here to say this is they're awful and they just need really good players. Well, and to the point we brought up a couple of moments ago, a mock draft having, you know, Cody Williams go fourth overall, That's that would shake things up. Nobody has any clue how this draft class is going to unfold. And that, to me, <clears throat> excuse me, is what is exciting about it because – a lot of times you go into the draft and you can kind of write in in Sharpie who the first four or five picks are going to be, and there's not a lot of surprises there. This year is different. We don't really even know who's going to be the number one overall pick. We know who likely the top two picks will be, but then after that, it's like, who the hell knows, man? Every mock you look at has somebody different going three, four, five, six. Maybe a team's trading out. Maybe a team's trading up. So I think there's a genuine curiosity of how it will unfold, and there's a potential for players who most people assume will be a top five, top six pick to still be there at seven, and that would be the Reed Shepard example. I, The only issue that I have with it, outside of just the obvious, it's another guard, is that I am still hurt. Hurting's not the right word. I, I still am frustrated with how— Oh, I know you're still hurting. I'm still in pain. I'm still frustrated with how they handled Scoot's rookie season at times, and I don't think they set him up for the best development year that he could have possibly had. And Ooh. just by that, I mean, I understand the 19-year-olds coming from the G League, like, there's going to be a growth curve. I get that. Nobody mm -hmm. was expecting him to come in and be a world beater from day one. They they put him into the starting lineup at the beginning of the season where they felt like they had to start him because he's a number three pick and he's the Dame replacement. He's playing alongside Anthony Simons. That just, to me, is a weird package, and it doesn't fit. Those are two ball-dominant guards. Neither of them are very good off the ball, especially Scoot Henderson, and so it just didn't fit. And then he gets hurt, and then you put Shaden Sharp into the starting lineup, and now Scoot's coming off the bench, and then he has Malcolm Brogdon in front of him, and in late you know fourth quarters for a team that is one of the worst in the NBA – Malcolm Brogdon is sucking up minutes because we got to play Malcolm Brogdon. Why would we want Scoot Henderson getting that experience? I didn't like the way that they handled his rookie season. And a lot of that was because they just simply had a log jam at that position. And so my primary frustration, if this does end up being the pick, like, dude, the guy shot 52% from three last year at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. He's a lights-out shooter. He was a 42-inch vertical. He's a great athlete. I understand all the arguments, and your argument mainly being what Gavoni said of, you suck. Take the best player possible. Who cares? You'll figure out the rest later. Just how do you even begin to unpack that nightmare of a logjam of having, I would imagine Malcolm Brogdon is gone, so I'll give you that. So I'll just take him off the board. Now four guards of Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, Scoot Henderson, and Reed Shepard. How do they get minutes? How do you parcel that out? Because I think development is the main thing that you need to do the next couple of years. And having four guys logjam two minutes, or two positions, I should say, where you can't spread out the minutes equally, to me, is not the way to develop. Well... I think your hypothetical question is it's okay to ask. I, I think it is we're still getting ahead of ourselves in the assumption they take him. I, again, they I don't think not. he'll be yeah. available at seven. He seems to be mocked mostly in the top four. But this would be for any guard in general. Reed Shepard well, is just the example. But here. on your scoop point, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but can't 
can you make an argument they didn't develop? I mean, he ended his year significantly better a player than because he was because Malcolm Brogdon was hurt and he had a chance to play. Yeah, but like I don't know if he comes out of the game. And with Anthony that. Simons was hurt as well. I, I don't. <laughs> I certainly have no evidence that says in the first three or four months of the season he was going to be that to start. No, of course he wasn't, and I don't either. But I don't care. I wanted him to play. But he he did play, and then he got better yeah. after he got injured. I mean, he got banged he got up banged and he up. was out for a while there. But he did. He started so poorly. I mean, statistically, one of the worst rookie starts we've ever seen. His shooting splits didn't improve all that much, but as the season went on, you saw a guy getting a little more comfortable. My they, point is, though, that he would not have been given that opportunity if Malcolm Brogdon and Anthony Simons were healthy. Like, maybe they eventually shut those guys down with fake injuries like we've done the last two years. I mean, I think we know they would have. Of yeah. course they would have. But the main reason he got better later in the year was, one, teams were not caring about playing Portland and you're getting watered down opponents. You but, are. two, he was given the opportunity to go out and run and play because two of the guys in the backcourt were no longer playing. And so he was given the full opportunity to say, hey, make your mistakes. You're going to play 38 minutes tonight. And he got slowly better as the year went on. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you there. I'm not really worried about those things. I just want him to go get the best player. And if you try, That's like, kind of where's where I'm at. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of things because I don't know. I'm okay getting Reed Shepard as long as you trade Malcolm Brogdon and Anthony Simons. Well, and I also don't think it's going to be Reed Shepard, to be fair. I just played it out of a— Yeah. I think Gavoni's kind of telling you Blazers, if they have a great player fall to them— are going to take them. That's just my read on it. I could be way wrong. Reed Shepard might not be in their top five. All the mocks lately have them kind of taking bigger players, which I think would make you and a lot of other fans that are kind of a little more on the outs with the Blazers happy, right? Yeah, get more, a wing, get a big. Yeah, yeah, some some size, some athleticism. Just not Zach Eady, please. <laughs> I mean, you cra you keep crapping on my guy Zach Eady. I'm gonna keep crapping. The pride of Lapine. I'm keep, keep crapping all over the place, man. The pride of Lapine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Zach Eady. Zach Don't Eady. Do it. Don't touch him at 14. What if he's love, really good? For the love of God. What if he's good? <laughs> what if he's not? We just need a big guy. What if he's the next Boban? He's gonna be in John Wick movies. We're gonna brag about that. He's Don't, so cool. Don't act like having a blazer <laughs> in a John Wick movie wouldn't be badass. Come on, what are we doing here? That is true. He'd be a cult hero.